Hello, my name is Rachel Golden. I'm daughter to Joel and Marianne, sister to Joanna and Becky, sister-in-law to John and Sam, and fur aunt to Albus. I'll start this evening with a call and response. I'll begin and then you read the words on the screen. We'll do it twice. God is good. All the time. God is good. All the time. Here you can see I wrote down some of my sins from this week. And it's sometimes hard to acknowledge that we have sinned, but I have. And now I'm going to engage in a faith practice that reminds me what happens when I love God and believe in God and ask for forgiveness, even when I'm a sinner. I'm going to hope I don't burn my apartment to the ground. I'd like to share where I have seen God recently. I live in Eugene, Oregon. That's 2,802.7 miles to the west of Jonestown. It's a 42 hour trip by car and approximately 15 to 18 hours in three flights by plane. And I'm here for the foreseeable future. Because of the pandemic and its shelter in place and social distancing mandates, churches like our own have increased their digital presence and bolstered their online communities. The beautiful thing about the internet is its ability to collapse time and space. So for me, this week I've seen God online, in watching and participating in Zion's talent show, listening to evening prayers from familiar faces, and singing along during the hymn sing, knowing that others, 2,802.7 miles away, were singing at the same time. I'd also like to share that this week I saw God in a surprise in the mail. I received a care package from the McQuaids, which made me feel loved. In it was this great drawing by Grayson. I definitely see God in his drawing. Thanks for helping me see God today, Grayson. Now I'll read Psalm 130. Fair warning, it's a doozy, so buckle up. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Oof, with this psalm, we know we are in it. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. There's no gentle tugging at the hem of God's robe. There's no waiting in line or sending an email to God to circle back quickly on that little issue of despair when God has a moment. No, we feel in this psalm the depression and hopelessness and exasperation and despair. It's a despair that can only result in crying out, in which there's nothing left to do but to wail. My understanding of this psalm is that it's generally accepted that the psalmist's despair is from their sin. In the unprecedented times in which we're living, though, we may have experienced some of those same feelings in the past two or three weeks, or we might be experiencing them presently. Depression, hopelessness, exasperation, despair, frustration. 
And while the writer of the psalm is expressing their despair from a place of sin, I think we can experience those feelings of desperation and hopelessness in other times and in other ways too. For example, in a pandemic filled with confusion, feelings of uncertainty, helplessness, guilt, or worry. But there's hope. The writer is so sunken into the pits that they have no way out. They know that there's nothing to be done, nothing of their own accord to save them from this depression. So the writer of the psalm doesn't barter or bargain or connive to try to get God's help. No, the psalmist waits for the Lord, crying out, and finds hope in God's word and promise of love and redemption. There's no doubt in my mind that in the coming days, we'll feel the range of emotions the psalmist felt. At least I'm certain I will. And when we find ourselves in a pit of helplessness and hopelessness or exasperation, exhaustion, loneliness, confusion, frustration, or desperation, I hope we can follow the psalmist's loud lead and cry out to the Lord, knowing God's love and power to redeem is bigger than anything we understand and stronger than anything we can imagine. Let's pray together. Whether you're bowing your head, closing your eyes, petting your dog, holding your kid's hand, or meditating on the variegation in your favorite houseplant, please engage now in whatever prayer practice feels best for you tonight. God, our source of peace and strength, we pray for our families, our town, our nation, and our world in this time of uncertainty. Guide us in our daily lives to face the fear and uncertainty with compassion, concern, service, love, and trust in your unwavering presence in our lives. We pray for those who feel the profound sense of despair, depression, desperation, worry, and hopelessness we hear in Psalm 130. We pray for those who are experiencing disappointments, successes overshadowed by tragedy, excitement quieted by uncertainty, and guilt of feeling that our own disappointments have no place when the hurting around us is so profound. We pray for those who are adjusting to new normals, kids without schools, parents taking on new roles as educators while juggling their own jobs, people learning to navigate the disappearing boundaries of home and office, those who've lost employment, those who are suddenly separated from family. We pray for those who pass away alone and for their loved ones who cannot be with them in their final hours or celebrate them with funerals. We pray for those who face the economic realities of working jobs that are considered essential, requiring them to put their personal health and safety at risk, yet don't provide paid sick leave, health insurance, time off, or a living wage. We pray by name for those who are working in health care, nursing care, or in our prisons, including Linda, Larry, Nicole, Kelly, Debbie, Pam, Travis, Rebecca, Bob, Ed, Ashley, Chris, Janelle, Jamie, Holly, John, Diane, Stacy, Paz, Lori, Bob, Jordan, Christian, Lindsay, Christy, Morgan, and Kayla. We pray for frontline workers, including Dylan, Nancy, Kenny, Bob, and Mark. We pray for those who do God's work all around us in big and small ways. God, our source of strength and peace, we pray you help us hear and feel the final words of Psalm 130, hope, love, and redemption. In your name we pray, amen. We are not alone, we are not alone, we are not alone, God is with us, we 
are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. God is with us. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. God is with us. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. God is with us. We are not alone. We are never alone. We are not alone. We are never alone. God is with us. God is with us ever and ever. We are never alone. I'm not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. God is with us. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. God is with us. We are not alone. Ever and 